Now just down here in the mud next to my trowel I can see evidence of a decorated pipe bowl. Whether or not it's whole or not is another question. Can you see there that tantalising glimpse of some leaves and a plant? I'm wondering if it's a thistle and rose and I found a few of those recently. Oh yeah. let's, let's have a look. Let's uh, gently ease the mud away. Oh yes, I think the certainly the bowl is intact. I don't think it's got much stem on. No, it doesn't. But yes, it is another rose and thistle, which is interesting because I have found two or three recently. There we are, let's have a closer look. I wonder if the same person made them. There's the rose. And there's the thistle and that blackness there will just fade naturally back to a creamy colour and it shouldn't take too long. Made to commemorate the unification of Scotland and England, so I believe, or at least the anniversary. Well, it's lovely to come down to the river in all different conditions, rain, mist, snow, and the dark too. And a few weeks ago, I met up with one of the ladies who lark, Monica Butling-Smith, and we had a really nice outing together. And Monica then went on to show me a few of her favorite finds. So we're now going to take a beautiful night trip on the Thames. Well, here I am by the River Thames. The sun is going down, well, it's probably gone down actually, and the tide is on the way out, and I'm here with Monica, one of the ladies who larks. Just one. I know, we are missing one of the ladies who larks because she has actually broken her wrist. Yeah, and so she was supposed to be here, so. She's a very sad girl. <laughs> yeah, so please everybody send her lots of good yeah. thoughts. Yeah. And so, Monica and I are going to be the ladies who lark this evening and uh, what are you we'll, hoping? We'll try and do the banter without Anna, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. going to be different. But it we'll is, do... we're going to have to do twice as much to make up for it. So have you got anything on your wish list? For today? Ooh, it's just so nice to be out. No, I'll see what, what Thames throws up, you never know. There might be nothing, you never know. Sometimes exactly. there is. Exactly. But sometimes exactly. it could be be treasure and if yeah. not I've got some bits and bobs I can show you later. That's brilliant so. I'm looking forward to <laughs> seeing those and it's going to get dark so we've got our headlamps and it's going to be really beautiful as well with all the lovely lights so let's not waste any more time talking let's, let's go down. down. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's very muddy isn't it look at all this muddiness. Oh, that's going to be challenging in the dark and in the mud. Best of luck. <laughs> yes. So we've got a couple of hours to search around in the mud 
And um, Monica, if you find something that looks interesting, give me a shout and I'll be right over to document it. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's lovely and peaceful. It's like another world down here. Lovely old bone. Let's see. Lovely old tooth. Cow's tooth. Yeah. My mum had a tooth out yesterday morning, so I'll take that home for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tooth out. Oh, I don't like the dentist. Now, what is this weird little thing here? It looks like the top of a whistle or something. See that? It's funny, isn't it? I shall put it in my bag for examination later. So I'm just having a look around here and I can see a nice early pipe bowl there. Early 1600s. Let's go and see what Monica's found. It's just the base of a bottle, but it's just oh. a little light shines on Oh my it. gosh, so look at that. So it looked like a jellyfish. Oh yeah, it looks like a sea anemone. Well, well I'm not gonna... I think it, it is, it's glass. It's glass, look. yeah. I think it's just the base of a bottle, but That's it's just... really pretty. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, are you sure? Why don't you try and get it out? It looks like a dome or something. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, oh, but that's so it's pretty. <laughs> it looked like but isn't that... That was just... It did look really pretty. It looked magical. like a, a little orb. Yeah. But we shall just enjoy it for what it was. Yeah, exactly. I'll put it back so that somebody else can have the joy of it. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a little token of some kind. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it close yet. Napoleon. Oh my goodness. Napoleon. It's not a token. Is it a token? It feels like a token, but it's Napoleon. Oh god, I can't see that. That's a look. You've got probably better eyesight than me. There's, do you know what I can't see? There's a head on there as well. Oh, oh how exciting. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, I'm happy with that. What a great find. Clean that up and have a look at it. Yeah. In better light. Well done, Monica. <laughs> that's exciting. Now not to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's the classic bit of find the coin, then probably drop it in the mud again. What have you spotted down there then, Monica? Nice horseshoe, and I do like my horses. That's absolutely oh, beautiful. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, so you have. So will you um, I should sort of, uh, electrolyse that? <laughs> I might give it a gentle clout with a hammer first. Yeah. I mean, look at it, it's still got big stones on it, so a lot of that will come off. That's lovely. I wasn't holding on, hang on, I'll just give it a tap on. I want to take all that rock, there you go, look, can you see it's starting oh, to... Oh yes, You yes, can see the nails super. still in it. So that's I think that horse lugging. used to be clopping around London. Oh look, you can see the nail, nail holes in there quite yep. nicely. Oh that's, that's nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's that'll, lovely. That'll clean up, that'll go on my shelf along with my skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Along with your skulls. There's a nice um, handle down here that I've... Yeah, I saw that. It's, quite yeah, nice, it's pretty, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, look, it's all coming. It's cleaning off really nicely there, isn't it? You're not yeah. even going to need to uh, no. do any electrolysis on that, probably. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's really nice. I love it's the way it's it, slightly it? kind of bent out of shape. Now, I can see something just here, and it looks like the edge of a coin. Um, a flattened coin, I think, that may have started out its life as a coin and then it got squashed. Or it might just be a piece of metal. I don't know. How curious. Let's see what else we can find here. I'll put that safely in my bag. 
There's so much metal here. Lots and lots of pins, lots and lots of nails. Which is a nice pin. Lots of lovely old pins. Ooh, what's that? You see this? It's a kiln pop. A lump of clay that's just been squidged roughly into shape by the potter's hand and used to hold up a shelf or whatever he needed to inside a kiln. Um, nothing particularly valuable but it's, it's always interesting to show how many potteries were on the banks of the Thames because they had access to water, um, kindling brought down the river. Yeah. Um, that's quite interesting. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Probably won't take it home because I've got a few already but it is a, it's, it's nice. Okay, actually I might put it in my bag yeah, because yeah. then I can... Um, yeah. Pull out right. a kiln prop that yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've got one. It's quite a nice one because it's a good fat shape and you can see how the shelf went on the top. Now just down here there's part of a fossil. It's an echinoid, look, part of an echinoid. One of the older things that you're going to find on the Thames foreshore. You got there, Monica? This is a Tudor button. Oh, little Tudor button. I think that's a little Tudor button. What do you reckon? Let's see. Well, that could be. Yeah, that okay. looks like a little Tudor button, doesn't yeah. it? It's the right shape. And it's solid. So, I think it's pewter or something. You're doing well so far, aren't you? Uh, early days. <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> the button might be the last thing so far. Well, we've still, got a, we've still got a while. Yeah, we've We've got as long as the batteries last. <laughs> <laughs> nice anchor. Yeah, isn't that lovely? That's the end of it. It's a big beast, isn't it? Let's go and see what's going on over here with Monica. What have you got there then? Um, a little handful of musket balls. One that's been shot and squished, deformed, but one, two, three little different sizes. Yeah, yeah. that's funny because actually I just I found a little one. Oh, you have as well. Is that a little musket ball? Or oh, actually, it, it looks almost weight? like it's brass. Is it? Does it have? It's lead, I think. Is it lead? Mm, I think so. That's a, that looks a different type yeah, of lead look, to that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look different. It? Maybe it's um, something else. I'll tell you what, afterwards. Maybe it's can... an uh, alloy, a mix of lead yeah, and something it could else. Because that, no, you're right, that does look leady and that doesn't look quite as leady, does that it? Look, it could be an alloy of something. Mm. It's got a little line, so it yeah, could be something. Something that was cast. Yeah, two part. It could be two a part fishing part. Uh, Or maybe it is a special kind of lead musket that, <laughs> <laughs> that we've never seen before. Uh, with Monica by the Thames again and she has bought some of her beautiful finds which she's going to show us. A few bits and bobs. <laughs> okay I'm gonna have a quick pan okay. over them. Wow There's what a lovely selection. Bits and bobs. Okay so um, 
please tell I'll us the story behind these finds. I'll start off with the most recent one, which is this, which is a silver aglet, which is absolutely beautiful. We normally find them and they're brass, like that one there. Yeah. Sometimes you get brass decorated, but you don't often get silver, and it's such beautiful quality, really thick, heavy silver, and it polished up as good as some of my that, earrings. That's gorgeous. So <laughs> yeah. that was used like a bit like a shoelace yeah, on the end yeah. of a ribbon or something, so a tassel. Up your, your jacket, whatever you'd have, instead of having a zip, you'd have um, laces and the laces, the lace ends, instead of plastic, you'd have a little metal aglet. So Lovely, back in Tudor yeah. times. Back in Tudor yeah. times, yeah, exactly. Super. Tudor. Think Shakespeare. <laughs> Tudor shoelace. Another one I found recently is this little hairpin, which would have been adorning the head of a Roman matron oh my nearly 2,000 years goodness, ago. Goodness, a Roman, Roman hairpin. hairpin? What's it made of? It's made of bronze. She would have basically had a hair piece made of matted old hair and wool um, put into her hair and then her own hair wrapped around it and sewn in. And these pins weren't so much for holding the hair, they were more for just adorning. So you would get some made of jet, some made of bronze. This would have been a lot shinier. Um, when it was first made and you get some glass ones they had some really decorative and the bone ones that we find quite often we don't often find bronze ones so that's, that's quite wonderful so quite would lovely. that be from a middle class roman yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. a poor roman would have had <laughs> <laughs> if she could afford to have pins at all she'd have had bone ones that right. she could have probably even got her uh, hubby to carve himself but, oh. but these would have been forged therefore a bit more pricey um, we've also got in here, which is quite cute, um, it's a coral bead. Oh, look at so that, tiny. Tiny coral bead, and it's on a pin with a knot in it. And coral beads were popular, again, in Tudor times. Um, and they sometimes had pins that were specially decorated they could put on their clothing. So that's quite unusual. I've never seen one of these come up before, so I'm quite chuffed with that one. And so that um, would have been on clothing? On clothing, yeah, yeah just to decorate. Um, so let put that one in. What else we got? A um, couple of beads here. If I try not to lose them. <laughs> one of them is a jade bead and one of them is carnelian. So these are like pure stones that have been hand carved to shape. Um, it's very, very hard to date them. But yeah. What are you thinking? Do you have a feeling? I found them in a very Roman area. Well, so they I, could be they Roman could, then. They could well be. So they might not be. They could have come off somebody's necklace from <laughs> trip to Rome a hundred years ago. But but I think that I um, I don't know. I'm I'm being hopeful. I'm probably being very hopeful. Um, then we have a lovely bead, um, Venetian. Oh, look at the bead. colours in that. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's, and yeah. it's a chunky, great big one. This one. It's well river worn, so it's been in the Thames for. A, a very long time. That's lovely. Hard to pinpoint a date exactly, but I'm reckoning sort of Edwardian, Victorian. Is that glass? So yeah, glass. Yeah, yeah a glass bead. lamp work bead. I've so got basic. one very similar, yeah. and the colours in it are just stunning, stunning, aren't they? And they would have done the little dots with heated rods of coloured glass that they put on top of the main mm -hmm. main bead. Very pretty. Um, and the other glass item I found is this, which is basically a raspberry prunt. But it's blue. I don't know if I hold it up to the oh, light. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. So, uh, can you explain what a prunt is for okay. those that don't know? So this little prunt here um, is not your typical raspberry prunt that would have been on the side of a beaker. Yeah. Um, this one was actually on the base of a beaker and it was a Dutch design um, around 1700s and they would have had three little prunts in blue and then a milk glass on the top. It's about 1700s. Gosh. So, six, I think actually 1650s or 1700s. So you can see the colour of it is mm. really beautiful. Look at that. Uh, another one I found recently, which is quite fun, is this, which is basically a ring that has been made out of a fork. Oh, yeah. And you, you, there's the main stem of the fork, and as you turn it around, you can see the four tines. Um, and that apparently. It was quite popular amongst servants to nick the cutlery and make jewellery out of it. What if you didn't have much material. <laughs> so idea. this is hard to date exactly. Um, you can still buy the same kind of design down yeah. flea markets. I think there's someone in Greenwich Market doing them. Um, but looking at the shape of, the, of it, it's very, very crudely made. So yeah. I think it's relatively early. So probably about 
1800s or so. But it's lovely. It's I wonder who, who wore that. Exactly. It does have an old look about it. Does, it does, doesn't it's it? Very, it looks very well worn, doesn't it? I kind of half of me thinks it could even have been somebody on board a ship who mm. had nothing else to do with their time, and it's yeah. something, some a way of killing time and making something, some jewellery. My last of my little finds is probably the best. I'm just going to hold it in the pot. Yeah. That is a little pilgrim's badge. It's basically four leaves. Um, and if I, did you get that? If I turn it over, you can still see on the back, it's got its um, pewter pin still there. Oh, that's... So, and so it's intact. That's, that's lovely. Slightly bent. There's that little three noduled mm -hmm. bit there that I would love to fold back, but I know if I do it will snap. It's yeah. so fragile. And I found that to surface find, and it's a living miracle it didn't break up. I think two more tides, and it would have all the edges and would have broken off. How old do you it. think that is then? That's about 1350 to 1500. That's incredible, so, isn't it? So, yeah. It may not be religious, it could be just a um, fashion badge, or it could be a lover's badge, um, or it could be a pilgrim's badge. I have looked in both the um, pilgrim's badge books, and I can't find a parallel mm -hmm. to it. So, um, I'm intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> I'm intrigued. I've yet to show it to my flow and see what he thinks of it. But I'm quite excited about that one. And the very last thing I have to show you, I found last week, and it's my dog paw. Oh, which that is just is adorable. Just, isn't that beautiful? I love that. So that is a little dog. I reckon he's probably about the size, a cross between a Jack Russell and a Staffordshire in size and shape. Is that a Tudor dog? Yeah, yeah, he would have been. A dog from been. Tudor times. Yeah. His paw print is forever in eternity you, on a tile. And you can actually see, if you look in close, you can see the little almost sandpaper texture of his pads. Oh. And little on the side there, there's little tufts of hair still. I can't can't believe it. My dog is a running dog, a, a lurcher, and her paw, when it forms a print in the mud, is that shape. Right. Because she's tall and long and thin and designed for running. This is a short squat dog, possibly designed for ratting. Yeah, so you, you were saying that actually some dogs were, they were used specifically for testing to see if tiles well, were that's, ready? Uh, that's the theory. Is I mean, th basically, they w you need to have your tiles at a certain, certain level of dryness before you fire them. Yeah. So you don't want them too soft, otherwise they'll explode. If they dry, they may well have warped. So yeah. you have a, we tend to sort of like say from between leather hard and slightly drier than leather hard. Um, and you just get your dog to run across and see. Because if you try to, as a human, you yeah, put two big too footprints much in. On. Um, and if you try to stick a stick in it... That's really special, uh, actually, putting your little fingers in, a little, in the little paw prints yeah. and just imagining this little dog. All I've those got, my, I've got my little hounds to, years ago. to check it out for me. She couldn't smell the other dog, though. She had, it, she had a good try, but she couldn't smell That's it. That's very, very special. Mm. Oh, thanks so much for bringing those finds. Oh, and, okay. um <laughs> but also, I was just going to say that you're the admin on a Facebook group, aren't you? It's yeah. Thames Foreshore... Thames Foreshore Finds, but yeah. also River Thames Mudlocking Finds. So there's two different groups. Okay. Um, they're both lovely, very friendly. Um, very good if you, if you find things. Um, it's really good to post it up there because it's got quite a knowledgeable group yeah. of people who are there. And they can tell you whether you need to show it to your fine liaison officer. So it's quite a useful resource to have. So, okay, yeah. brilliant. So I'll put the details up on the screen. So everybody go and check out those Facebook groups and um, yeah, and be part of a, a great mudlarking community. <laughs> See that little boat over there struggling against the tide. Well, we started off this video with a Scottish connection and now we're going to take a quick trip to Scotland to meet a couple of mudlarkers called Craig and Nicole. So let's go and see what they're going to show us. Hi, Hi we're, we're Scottish, Scottish mudlarking. mudlarking. I'm Nicole. And I'm Craig. I can see what you're looking at right yeah. now. What is it? So this is incredible. So, <laughs> oh well, I have just found another piece of blue then. If that's oh. not the piece. 
this is not the piece that Nicole was looking no. at. She was enticing me over here to find this piece. It's a blue and bottle. And then I, did, I saw this little blue bottle. No. It's a cute, really small piece as well, isn't it? It's oh, lovely. Oh, that's a really nice teal colour. That's very unusual. I think the sun's really helping. We should stay here. There, as you can see, a bit of milk glass over there. And at your feet, there's a nugget of black green glass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see I that? I see that, yeah. Just here. Mm -hmm. Lovely. That's a really nice drop. Ah, look at that. Something rather lovely. I'm going to see if Nicole can find it. No. I'll, I'll show oh, you. It's oh, here. It's here. It's, yes, right there. It. You see it now? Oh yes, I see it now. Oh my goodness. Well, that's really lovely. That is really lovely. A couple of really nice pieces here and I think we'll maybe have a couple of pieces of jewellery for the shop. <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. It's very clear. Yeah. Maybe it's not, I don't know if that's some kind of heraldic thing or a Maybe. maker's mark or whatever. It looks yeah. stamped. It's very, very neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't know. We are right below where the old castle was, so... Yeah. Who knows? We're based in the Kingdom of Fife and we're lucky enough to be located between two amazing river systems. The Firth of Forth and the Firth of Tay. Today we've come back to one of our favourite places. We're on the shore of the River Tay at Tayport. We first visited this part of the Tay in the summer and we found some really amazing treasures. Among them, a swing top stopper that we used to trace a long forgotten local soft drinks producer and to tell the story of the Victorian fascination for aerated water and how Schweppes took Joseph Priestley's invention and turned it into a commercial success. Anyone who's watched our channel will know that I love to find beads, marbles and bottle stoppers. It's something blue, it's something blue. It's there. Oh right. I don't know if it's just a piece of uh, blue sea glass or maybe a bead or something. I'll have to unearth it. Oh my god, it's a That's bead. a bead. Oh that is really nice. It's a stunning okay. blue colour. If you remember the um, the stories where beads might come from in the St. Monan's video, lace makers uh, used to have these uh, these bobbins, and at the end of the bobbins, they were always colourful beads. Let's have a quick look at some of the other places that we've been to. Oh, that really is cool! <laughs> Such a cool find. Well, I'm chuffed. That's us. We can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to find a marble now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness. Look at it. It's been really great sharing what we do with you, Nicola, so thank you so much for that. We hope you have a fantastic time on the banks of the Thames. Happy, Happy Mud Larkin and, and bye-bye from, from sunny, sunny Scotland. Scotland.
everyone, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little outing with Monica. And don't forget to go over and take a look at some of Craig and Nicole's videos. They're at Scottish Mudlarking. Now, I've been really busy this week working on a special video which is coming out next Sunday. And it's about a very special find with a mystery surrounding it. And you'll be able to decide who might have once owned this particular find. So don't forget to tune in for that. Have a great week everyone and see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.